If there's one good thing the coronavirus has done, it's that it hit pause on human beings' attempts to destroy the planet. Rivers became crystal clear, smog was removed from the sky, and wild animals even made their way into some cities. It was almost as if nature reclaimed what rightfully belonged to it. Well, that lasted about a month, and now we're back to murdering the environment. But what if the animals decided to take a more vengeful approach? What if the Earth started treating us the way we've treated the Earth? Have we got a movie for you? You know, I actually consider myself one with nature. Think about it. I sleep outdoors, I bathe in rivers, when I need to use the bathroom, I just find someone with a nice looking backyard. Alright, 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 I got it. Thank you. And, um... What you said about uh, animals enacting vengeance on humanity, that's actually not possible. See, because animals' frontal cortexes aren't developed enough to understand the concept of revenge. Rodney, why don't you shut your mouth? Why don't you just stop talking right now? Every time we try to just have a good time and watch a movie, you have to come in with your holier-than-thou, you know, idiotic comments. Just shut your mouth. You won't be saying that when I sue you for defamation. Oh, more lawsuit talk, huh? Yeah. You want to sue me? Yeah, I Why don't you do it, Rodney? I oh, I know why you don't. Because the judge would hate you just as much as I do. Start the movie. After Jaws was released in 1974, killer animal movies became all the rage. We got Piranha, Alligator, and even a killer bear movie called Grizzly. Enter Day of the Animals, a movie that is often confused as the sequel to Grizzly because it has the same director, the same production company, two of the same stars, and a very similar plot. The only difference being that this movie is about the entirety of wildlife and not just bears. First we get some super scientific info about what humans are doing to the ozone layer. Whatever, hippies. The second I finish this 12-pack of Miller Lite, it's going straight in the lake. We cut to a group of people. There's not much indication as to what this group of people is doing, or perhaps we weren't really paying attention. Leslie Nielsen is in this movie, which is super weird. I can't think of many other quote-unquote serious movies that he's appeared in. So we find out that the group of people are tourists going on some crazy hike and they're all white. Because for some reason, white people don't feel alive unless they're climbing large rock faces. There's a very interesting cast of characters here. And by that, I mean everyone is about as generic as it gets. We have the rugged yet reasonable trail guide. We're only going to Sugar Meadow, not over the top of the mountain. It's all downhill for this group. The small town sheriff. But I'm not joking now. We have been having all types of accidents up here last week or so, and they just don't seem to stop. The news reporter slash love interest. This does remind me of a rodeo I covered once, though. I was up to my ears in bull then, too. The overbearing mother and her son. I just heard something weird. Yeah, well, don't bother me now, John. I don't know what I'm doing up this goddamn mountain anyway. It should be your father's job. That's his job. The former NFL player that now has cancer. All right, I admit it. That's a new one. The scientist. The Native American guy that is one with nature. There's something strange in the woods, and I don't know what it is. The married couple going through a rough patch. If you paid more attention to me and a little less to your law office, Frank, we wouldn't need this trip. And then there's Leslie Nielsen's character, the human villain. My father who art in heaven, you made a jackass out of me for years. You can't take Leslie Nielsen seriously, because I just keep thinking of him asking people not to call him Shirley. I don't really want to give you a plot summary, but rather go over a few ridiculous and hilarious scenes. Like the one where the wife gets attacked by a wolf, and the guide basically just tells her to walk it off. Not only that, but he sends the couple back down the hill to get medical attention by themselves. You just make it. Remember. Don't leave it alone five minutes, okay? Don't you love hiking, Rodney? Uh, 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 
Oh gosh, ow. You're fine, you're gonna be fine. Just walk it off. Dude, my bone is sticking out. Look, I'll tell you what. You head back down the hill. It's only like seven more miles. Get help there. I'm gonna head back. I'm gonna get to the top of the mountain. Dude, my leg is broken. And you're so obsessed about climbing your first 14er. Yeah, dude, I gotta be able to tell people I climbed a 14er, that's the only point. Why else would you climb a 14er? So you can tell people that you climbed a 14er. All right, catch you later, Rodney. This, of course, doesn't end well as they end up declaring their hate for each other. God, I hate you, I hate you! All right, damn it, get up yourself. Get up and move before these damn birds eat your eyes out. Come on! And the wife ends up being carried off a cliff by some birds. <laughs> by the way, doesn't this guy look like Gilligan? And I honestly don't think it's just the shirt. Or how about the scene where the scientist and cancerous football player talk about mortality in a cave? It's a touching moment where they come to the nice yet insanely cliche conclusion that you should live every day like it's your last. And the irony is that the next day does in fact end up being their last as they're eaten by a pack of ravenous dogs. And the best scene of all, perhaps one of the most absurd and beautiful scenes in film history. Leslie Nielsen murders a man with a stick as his girlfriend watches on. <laughs> then lightning strikes a tree. Then Leslie Nielsen attempts to sexually assault the girl, but is mauled by a bear. this while the mother and son characters watch on, terrified. This is a real scene. Someone actually sat down and wrote this. Other than that, there isn't much to say. Day of the Animals pretty much consists of people walking up a mountain and random stock footage of animals. I don't know, my expert analysis is that this movie is strange and insane, and for that reason, it's pretty entertaining. Well, thanks for joining us on this adventure. I hope you learned some things. I know I learned some things that um, I didn't know about myself. Did you learn anything? All right. See you guys later.